This is the new 2022 BMW M240i, and it's the sporty version of the new BMW 2 Series, at least until an M2 inevitably shows up. But for now, this is the one with an impressive 380 horsepower. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this E39 BMW M5 brought $34,000. This fantastic Audi R8 V10 Plus sold for over $112,000. And this wonderful Subaru Impreza WRX STI hatchback brought almost $30,000. Those are excellent cars. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool modern enthusiast car from the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. So let's talk M240i. Like I said, this is the new BMW 2 Series, just redesigned for the 2022 model year. Now, the latest 2 Series drops the convertible version and the manual transmission, but it still has some power. The base model is the 230i, which has 255 horsepower, or you can step up to this, the M240i with 380. And today, I'm going to review it. First, I'll take you on a tour of the the M240i and show you its quirks and features. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features, the new M240i. I have a little overview about this car. Like I said, this is the brand new BMW 2 Series. And in addition to a redesign for the 22 model year, there have been some changes to this car. For one, the convertible model is gone. You can now only get the 2 Series as a coupe, but a sedan has also joined the lineup. That's called the 2 Series Grand Coupe. And actually, it's not really related to this car at all. The Grand Coupe is front-wheel drive based whereas this car, the regular coupe, is rear-wheel drive based, and the 2 Series 2-door and 4-door really only share their 2 Series name, and that's about it. But let's talk model range for this car. Two versions available right now. The base model is the 230i, which has a 255 horsepower turbo 4-cylinder. It's only offered with rear-wheel drive, and it starts around $37,000. Or you can upgrade to this, the M240i, with a 380 horsepower power turbo six cylinder, quite a powertrain. This starts around $50,000 and it's only offered with all wheel drive. But BMW says both trims will eventually get the drivetrain from the other trim. So rear and all wheel drive will be available on both models. Now for right now, there is no M2 available. They call this the M240i, but a true BMW M car is not yet available on the new two series, but I consider it inevitable. An M2 is coming soon. But for now, this is the sportiest new 2 Series you can get. But anyway, the quirks and the features, starting with getting inside, the door handle is a traditional handle that you lift up, which I find so strange. Automakers, for so many years, have been trying to convince us that hoop door handles that you grab are the best way to do it, but now we're going back to lift up door handles like this car has. Anyway, you lift up the door handle, you open up the door, and you quickly see an enormous amount of BMW M stuff throughout this car. The door sill has an M badge, as you can see. The steering wheel at the bottom has an M badge. The seats have M colored trim, as you can see, and same goes for the floor mat, more M colored trim here, and same goes for the key. You get a little M color scheme on the key, like a BMW M car key. All of this in spite of the fact that this isn't a true BMW M car. A few years ago, they realized that they would make more sales of their highest trim versions if they started badging them as M. So instead of 235i, M235i. And that's that seems to have gone well for them because they're still doing it and they are throwing a lot of M logos all over the interior of this car. Not quite as many as a full M vehicle would get, but still enough to make the M presence very well known in the interior. But anyway, next we move inside the new M240i and it has a pretty familiar interior. No crazy changes or upgrades compared to other BMW models. It's about what you'd expect. And that means, well, for one thing, you get a good center screen. You can see it here and I like the way that this screen works. For one, the home screen is excellent.
excellent multi-panel display so you can see several things at once and it's configurable so you can choose exactly what you want displayed on each page of the home screen which is excellent you can have your navigation system and your radio or various other things basically whatever you want to see on there and they're easy to change and this screen has some other cool touches for one thing it's very responsive you can see i tap it it does exactly what i want like a smartphone and it's intuitive everything is easily laid out simple it all works quite well and there are some nice little benefits for example the camera system you can see multiple angles here top down the side the back but it, it also shows the exterior of the car which can make parking in very tight spaces pretty easy and as a nice enhancement to the camera system you can just tap this button next to the gear lever in the center console and pull up the front camera instantly which makes pulling into a parking space pretty nice you can just tap the button and see exactly where you are so you don't run over a parking curb or tap the car in front of you one other cool thing about this camera system is you can set an activation point and what that means is a point on the navigation map where the camera system will automatically activate every time you reach it so if there's like a steep driveway you always want the camera for set that as an activation point and as you pull up to it camera turns on and you don't have to turn it on yourself that's a pretty cool idea one other cool thing about this infotainment system the car that is displayed in this screen is color matched to this actual car you can see here's the car on the screen and it is purple just like the car I'm sitting in, which is always kind of a nice little piece of attention to detail. Now, one other thing I want to point out about this center screen, it's not just controllable as a touch screen. And if you would prefer not to touch because you don't want to take your eyes off the road and look at a screen, you have controls here in the center console that are more physical buttons and you can feel them and use this wheel to move around the screen. And that way you don't have to use it as a touch screen if you don't want. So you have some options in this infotainment system for how to control it. But anyway, moving on to the other screen in this interior, that would be the gauge cluster screen, obviously directly behind the steering wheel. And this is a full screen, high resolution, looks good, provides great information. Over on the left, you have your speedometer and that all looks nice and modern. In the center, you have a map, which looks cool and is obviously very useful for getting around. The drawback of this screen is that the only configurable piece is over on the right. This panel here can be adjusted to show you various different things, your music, your phone, various car information, all adjustable on this right panel. It's nice to have that level of configurability here, but it doesn't go as far as rivals. Mercedes-Benz and Audi let you fully configure their screens, change the entire panel display setup. You can have a full screen map or the music you want to see and the speed in the corner if you don't want that to be big. They're a lot more configurable than BMW, which as a screen that's relatively fixed in place is kind of a drawback considering it's a screen. It should be more configurable. But with that said, this card does have one very cool screen benefit, and that would be the one that's projected into the windshield. This car has a heads-up display, which is pretty common. You can see it displays a little bit of information, but BMW really knows how to do a heads-up display. And this one has a lot of different functions. For example, just changing the radio station. I can use this little wheel on the steering wheel to change the radio station. You can see it shows up full color and quite large in the heads-up display directly in front of you. You don't even have to look at the infotainment system or that gauge cluster screen because everything is on your heads-up display, very easy to see, and right in front of your line of vision, which is pretty cool. Like I said, BMW's heads-up displays are very comprehensive. But anyway, aside from the technology in this car, a few other interesting items worth noting. For one, they've ditched piano black trim in this interior. You'll see that commonly on a lot of cars, piano black in the center console, the dashboard. Here, you get this silver trim instead, this sort of patterned silver trim, which is certainly distinctive and notable and it stands out for an absence of piano black. That's become so popular, but it picks up fingerprints, it gets dirty, and the silver trim won't. So that's probably why they switched to it. Now, on the dashboard in the center console, they've switched to the silver trim, which makes sense, but on the door panel, it's a little bit strange, the trim they're using. For one thing, you have this patterned leather. You can see with, like, triangles imprinted into the leather, which looks a little odd, but whatever. Stranger, though, is directly below the interior door handle. You have this panel here with these little red dots. That's actually a screen. That turns completely off when the car is turned off and nothing is shown there. But when the car is on, you have have like trim being shown to you on a screen in the door panel, which is a rather unusual touch. Don't really see it that often, but this car has it. And by the way, speaking of the door panel, you can see a couple speakers in here, the upper of which says Harman Kardon. This car has its optional Harman Kardon sound system, which has 14 speakers. I mentioned this because 
that's a lot for a little two-door car like this, 14 speakers in this interior. But if you really want the maximum sound system, that's what you can get. But anyway, next up, another cool feature of this car, the gear selector. When you're in drive and you push it over to the left to go into sport mode, it automatically turns off the car's auto start-stop system, the system that'll like shut off its stoplights to save fuel. That's a pretty cool tie-in that going into sport mode turns that off so you don't have to do a two-step process of sport mode and then pressing that button. Also worth noting in the transmission area, no more manual offered for the 2 Series. It's gone. It used to be available, but now you only have an 8-speed automatic. Personally, I suspect that when the M2 is revived in the next year or so, it will offer a manual transmission. That's not confirmed anywhere, but I suspect based on how popular it was with the last M2, it's still coming back. But either way, no longer offered on the M240. Now, the benefit of having an automatic in this car is that it's really fast. 380 horsepower, all-wheel drive, a quick shifting auto. The result is 0 to 60 in around 4 seconds or less, which is seriously, seriously quick. And that's impressive. If you want to go fast in a straight line, you can do that in this car. The drawback, of course, is no manual transmission, kind of a lack of driver engagement and involvement, which is always a little sad. But there are trade-offs for everything. But anyway, next we must talk about the backseat of the M. 240i, and that means I have to climb back here due to a precedent that I established years ago and now deeply, deeply regret. <laughs> but anyway, I move the seat forward. It does so automatically and rather slowly, frankly, and then I try to stuff myself into the back of this car, which, as you can imagine, is not really ideal. If you want to carry around rear passengers, you can get a 3 Series sedan, a 5 Series sedan, a 7 Series, an X3, an X1 but you probably wouldn't want to do it in a little coupe like this unless you absolutely need to or for short trips. However, strangely enough, even though this back seat probably won't be used very often, it has a full climate control zone back here. You can adjust the temperature, where the air is coming out, the fan speed. You have your own rear climate vents, as you can see. There's a full rear seat climate control system and two USB-C ports back here as well, which is a lot of stuff for a back seat that nobody's really ever going to get into. If I get into two-door cars with back seats that cost four times what this one does, and they don't have full climate control systems, it's strange BMW bothered with a rear seat climate control in the 2 Series, but this car has it. But anyway, other than the surprising climate control system back here, nothing especially unusual about the rear seats. You only get two of them, no center seat in the back. But you can drop the center armrest and you will find cup holders here. With an unusually complicated lid design, there are two separate lids. So you can close one and have half a cup holder if for some reason you might want that in the back of your 2 Series. But anyway, next up we move on to the cargo area, the trunk in the new 2 Series. And as you can see, it's pretty much just a trunk. Surprisingly large for a little car like this, but nothing particularly interesting or unusual back here, except one notable item I discovered. The rear seats fold down, and interestingly, you can also fold down the middle part of the rear seat separately from the other two, which is kind of cool because if you have a rear passenger sitting in the seats and some long pole-shaped item, them, you could stick it through the seats and still keep your passengers there without having to fold down one of the seats like you do in most other cars. I'm still not exactly sure why BMW is focusing so much on these rear passengers that will never exist, but it is a cool feature to have. Also notable back here, I borrowed this car from BMW North America, and I open up the trunk and I discover there is a license plate back here. Even BMW Corporate <laughs> doesn't put a front license plate on its cars, proving that they are not that removed from true car enthusiasts. And finally, I want to talk about one other thing with this car, and that would be the way it looks, the styling, which has been kind of controversial. Actually, that surprises me because I like it. I think it's fine. It's a little bit awkward. It's a little weirdly proportioned. It isn't as smooth or as sleek as the outgoing version, but I don't think it looks bad by any means. There's a lot of weird car designs out there right now, and I think this one is at least relatively restrained and sort of in keeping with the 2 Series evolution. It makes sense to me. And there are some cool styling bits on this car in particular, one is this color, which is purple. This is a purple car. Five, eight years ago, nobody was buying anything other than gray, silver, white, black, but colors are in right now, and this one is Thunder Knight Metallic. That's what they call it, but I'm going to simplify that for you. It's purple. But aside from that, other notable touches to the M240i, around back, this rear diffuser is very muscular, very bulky, looks very performance car, actually. Very BMW M, some might say. Same deal with the rocker panels. You can see they're flared out on a different color from the body. Also, 
kind of looking sporty and exciting BMW M-ish. And then you have a more aggressive front end in the standard 2 Series, including these big triangles on the side. These are black painted in the M240i. They sort of blend in with the purple color, but in later colors, they look a little weird, but they do enhance the front end of this car and make it look more aggressive. And then you have another styling upgrade, which is wheels. This car has 19 inch wheels, thin spokes. They look sporty. They have an M logo printed right on them, and they're wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are known for good performance. So you think about additional power and obviously upgrades the suspension and the brakes for this car with the standard model, plus all of these style touches that upgraded. And it kind of does seem like a sort of M car. This isn't just a two series with extra power. It has a lot of M like touches. So maybe we can forgive them for all the M badges. Maybe. <laughs> By the way, one other design item worth pointing out with this car, the front end, the grille is still small. BMW models are adding these giant gaping grills that have been very controversial and with good reason, but this car doesn't have it. And that alone might be a reason to buy this over the 4 Series, which has the massive and weird looking grille. It hasn't made its way onto the 2 Series yet, and I think that alone makes this car pretty attractive from a design and styling standpoint. And next up, speaking of the grill in this car, a couple of other interesting items worth pointing out up front. For one thing, the grill opens and closes. Right now the car is parked, it's off, and the grill is closed. As you can see, no air can pass through here. But when it turns on, when it needs to suck in air, these grill slats will move out of the way and open up so air can flow through. They do this for aerodynamics. When the grill is closed, it's better aero, which theoretically improves fuel economy just a little bit, but enough that it makes sense to do it. The the other thing you'll notice under the hood, this is that big, powerful six cylinder, 380 horsepower, which is a really strong number, especially for a non M car. And you can see on top of it all, you have this plastic engine cover that says M performance with fake carbon fiber and six little fake carbon designs, just so you know that it's a six cylinder, which I guess is kind of important to point out since this isn't the lowly base model with its mere four cylinder. Now, one other item I want to point out under here you can see the VIN very prominently under the hood in BMWs. These new 2 Series models are built in Mexico, which I don't think is a big deal, except for the fact that Mexico VIN numbers start with three. All cars built in Mexico, their VIN starts with three. And the next two numbers or letters in a VIN are the manufacturer's identity. So for example, all Mercedes-Benz VINs, second and third position is DB for Daimler-Benz. On Porsche VINs, it's PO or zero for Porsche. Well, here they've done the manufacturer identity as M. W, and that way all the VINs start with 3MW, which is a cool little quirk for those of us who are very geeky about little car details like VIN numbers. Okay, time to drive it now. <laughs> And so those are the quirks and features of the new BMW M240i. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new M240i. Now I know this car has been a little bit controversial with enthusiasts, maybe a lot controversial for a couple reasons. Number one, because they ditched the convertible. No, I'm just kidding. Enthusiasts don't care about that. Uh, because they ditched the manual transmission and because of the way it looks. The styling, I think, is a surprising criticism. I, I agreed, actually, when I first saw the press photos, and it's almost, looking back at them, it's almost like BMW took those photos to, like, make the car, it was a bad angle, and it, there were some bad shots. Um, in person, it just, it looks like the next evolution in the 2 Series. It looks totally normal, and I think it's fine. I think the front end and the rear end maybe come up a little weirdly high or something. I don't know, but it's mostly fine. I would say 80, 90% fine, and there's a lot of bad design out there. This is nothing comparison. Dropping the manual transmission thing is a bigger deal because enthusiasts, uh, this is sort of BMW's enthusiast car now. Enthusiasts kind of feel like, um, you know, they were left behind with the 3 Series a while ago. That car dropped its manual a while ago, and so this is kind of like the last bastion of BMW enthusiasm. It's a smaller car and it still has sort of that ethos from the 2002 and the E30 from back in the day. And so losing the manual is kind of a blow to enthusiasts. Couple things about that. Number one, I get it. I like manual transmissions. I love them, in fact. Um, and I'm a little surprised they ditched it here. But one thing to keep in mind, I do think the M2 will come and I wouldn't be surprised if it has a manual. BMW hasn't said anything about this yet. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen, but 
On Cars and Bids, we sell M2s a lot, and we sell, uh, 75% of the ones we sell are manuals. They carry a big premium. There was a big enthusiast following for that car. A lot of people ordered manuals even still, and I bet it comes back on that. So you can't get it on this, but maybe it'll be on the M2, uh, maybe. The other thing about this transmission, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> That's the thing. These automatics, these manuals, the take rate for manuals is not particularly high, the number of people who choose them, and the automatic is just so good now that it has converted even a lot of real diehard manual people. Not all, still some people would rather have a manual, but if it's your only option, this is a pretty good transmission, and it's a pretty good powertrain. I gotta say, BMW comes under fire for their cars getting bigger and wider and fatter and heavier, and everybody complains about that stuff, and I don't think it's all accurate because they've done such a great job with suspension and power that they mitigate some of that stuff, but in this car, you don't have to have it mitigated. This car is still little and, and tossable, and I just think that's so cool. You know, Audi is in this segment with the S3, which is a front-wheel drive-based car, and it's just not the same level of focus. This is a true coupe, and it drives like it, and it feels like it, and it acts like that. Frankly, this powertrain is probably the best one that I've had uh, in a 2 Series. I was a huge fan of the 1M, the original E82 1 Series M. Loved that car, still love that car, but it was only 300 horsepower. This is approaching 400, and it's not even the full M model. Like, this is a fast car. It really is. And that, there's something to that. Yeah, it doesn't have a manual. It looks a little weird, but if you just, like, it's still good. It really is. It's still an impressive and fun car, and I think that's a cool thing about it. Yes, I would also rather have a manual transmission, but what I would most want to have is a BMW that you can still toss around, that you still feel like it's small enough to take into canyons, and it's fun, and it's enjoyable, and it's exciting on curves, and this still is that car. I told a lot of people that I felt that the M2 and the M2CS and the M2 Comp were the end of the line for the 2 Series. Like, that was it. After this, it's done. They're going to go to plug-ins. It's going to be bigger. But driving this car, I don't feel like that anymore. In fact, now I think that this generation's M2 and M2CS and M2 Comp will might be the end of the line for the 2 Series. But this is a pretty excellent car for the people who are into this. If you want kind of a daily driver commuter type car, you don't need more space, and you want something that's fun and exciting, this is great, especially at this price point. This one probably is equipped to around 60 grand, and that's not so bad given everything that it offers. 380 horsepower, tossable, fun, exciting, good steering, good handling, a great and eager powertrain. There's a lot to like, and it's all-wheel drive, which is great for people in the north. And by the way, with regards to the steering and handling, you know, Steering with this car is never quite as precise as like a Cayman. It's interesting because this is BMW's like sportiest kind of enthusiast car and it is a, a joy. It's a total blast. But every time I get out of one of these and into a true mid-engine purpose-built sports car, you just realize this is not quite on that level. But it also doesn't make the practicality compromises. You have two true back seats here. You have a trunk that is like normal and reasonable. You have a car that maybe doesn't attract as much attention or cost as much. And so steering and handling is great for what this car is, not quite as precise as it could be. Handling is fantastic, frankly, um, but again, not like true sports car level. If you're deciding between this and like a base Cayman, that's just gonna be a better sports car. The question is this, you, if you want the trade-off in practicality. And so that's the new BMW M240i. No, this car no longer offers a manual transmission and the styling isn't as smooth as the prior models, but this is a rare BMW that hasn't gotten over huge in weight and size and that hasn't lost its driver focus and it has a fantastic powertrain and now it's time to give the new M240i a Doug score And the Doug score is here, 61 out of 100, which places the M240i here against similar cars. It actually beats out the M440i for a few reasons. Namely, the M240i looks better and it's more fun to drive, though the larger M440i is a bit more comfortable. Overall, I'm very impressed with the M240i. It's thrilling and shockingly quick, and from behind the wheel it feels a lot more M than you might think, given that it's not technically a real M car.